I'm Amanda Glassner, Deputy Editor at Cybercrime Magazine, and you're watching the Winter 2025 Women in Cybersecurity Report. When it comes to women in cybersecurity, we cover it all on our X feed at x.com slash women no cyber. Joining me today is Elise Gunn, CISO at Nasuni. Elise, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you. It's so great to be here. SC Media unveiled the 2025 Women in IT Security Honorees, an extraordinary group of leaders shaping cybersecurity's future and inspiring change across the industry. This program, which is now in its 12th year, honors achievements that go beyond traditional expectations, spotlighting the skills, courage, and dedication of women driving some of the most critical shifts in IT security today. The 2025 honorees remind us that as the field of cybersecurity evolves, so must its champions with their vision and dedication safeguarding organizations across all sectors and setting a standard for a more inclusive, progressive, and secure your digital future. Elise, from your perspective, as cybersecurity continues to evolve, what role do you see yourself and other female leaders playing in shaping a more inclusive and secure digital future? Yeah, you know, I see women leaders and even diverse leaders more broadly playing a, a critical role in not just a more inclusive digital future, but a more secure one. To me, those two ideas are really inseparable. They're intrinsically linked. Uh, security is really strongest when it's formed by a wide range of lived experiences and perspectives. And, you know, my own approach to leadership and program building is really shaped by my personal background, and no one else is going to see a challenge exactly the same way I do. And so, so I really think the same is true for every member of a team and hopefully a diverse team at that. Because when you really bring those different experiences together, you can naturally broaden your understanding of risks, opportunities, and just different ways of thinking. And so that diversity really shows up in better decision making, stronger problem solving, and ultimately better business outcomes. Secondly, diverse leadership is really also essentially essential as technology pushes us deeper into ethical and moral territory, especially with the acceleration of AI. These questions are, are really more complex than ever before, and we simply cannot afford to examine them through a single lens anymore. If we do, we'll miss things and really make avoidable ethical mistakes. And, you know, women and, and other underrepresented groups are really pivotal here because, again, they're ensuring that we're looking under every rock and examining every corner of any particular issue. And those perspectives informed by, you know, different communities, different challenges, different experiences really allow us to evaluate these problems, these ethical gray areas more holistically. So in short, diverse leaders don't just make the digital future more inclusive, of course, which is a wonderful goal to have, but they also make it smarter, safer, and more resilient. Now, diving a little deeper into inclusivity in the industry, in a significant move to bridge the gender gap in the cybersecurity sector, Kaspersky, in partnership with Smart Africa and Africanes in Tech, unveiled an innovative career orientation test. The science-backed Future You in Tech initiative aims to inspire young women to explore and pursue careers in a field that has traditionally been a male-dominated workforce. By the end of 2025, cybersecurity ventures predicts that women will represent just 30% of the industry's global workforce, which is up from 25% in 2022. Elise, how effective do you think tools such as career orientation programs are in encouraging young women to pursue cybersecurity? And what other types of resources or initiatives do you believe can make an even bigger impact? You know, I'm always excited to see these career orientation programs and partnerships that really open the doors for women and girls and other, again, underrepresented groups. Uh, early exposure really, really matters. The barriers to entry in cybersecurity can be very intimidating, and these initiatives play a, a key role in breaking those barriers down. So, you know, I definitely think we should be investing in programs like those. They really spark interest and build confidence at the start of somewhere, someone's career. But there's another area that I feel often gets overlooked and that's that mid-career support. When we talk about diversifying industries, including cybersecurity, I found that the focus often centers on either the entry-level pipeline or executive leadership. And those, of course, matter, but the middle of the career ladder is really where so much transformation happens. It's where people decide whether they see a long-term future in the field, and it's where things you know, like mentorship, training, and other forms of support can really dramatically uh, change someone's professional trajectory. So, you know, personally, I'd love to see more organizations 
whether it's public, private, academic, or you know, hopefully all three, uh, really invest in helping women advance from that individual contributor role into leadership and people management positions, because that can mean offering things like targeted development programs so they can experience different sides, different domains of what cybersecurity can offer you, and really just clear pathways for advancement. If I could really just wave a magic wand, I would create a lot more of those mid-career accelerators, so to speak. That's really where we're seeing a, a supercharge in the talent that's already in the field. We don't let them get left behind and we enable them uh, to not just thrive, but lead once they're in cybersecurity. That transitions us perfectly into our next topic, actually. So BlackBerry Limited, in collaboration with the Global Affairs Canada and Rogers Cybersecure Catalyst at Toronto Metropolitan University, launched the Women in Cyber Leadership Program to advance women cybersecurity professionals into leadership roles across Malaysia and ASEAN member states. So the five-day course, which kicks off in January of 2026, will be held at the MCMC and BlackBerry Cybersecurity Center of Excellence in Cyberjaya, Malaysia. It aims to address the region's cybersecurity leadership gap by equipping mid-level women professionals with strategic capabilities in cyber risk management, governance frameworks, and executive leadership. Elise, you mentioned this in your prior answer, but what barriers still prevent women from moving into cybersecurity leadership, and how can regional investments, including government, academia, and industry partnerships, help remove those obstacles? You know, I tend to look at this question through a broader societal lens, honestly, because many of the barriers that limit that limit women's advancement in leadership, including cybersecurity leadership, aren't purely professional. They're really structural. You know, women encounter life circumstances that men simply do not, you know, the most obviously being pregnancy and, and childbirth. And historically, a woman's decision to either have or even not have children has affected her career trajectory in ways that men just rarely experience. You see it even in regions with incredibly strong parental leave policies and very supportive social programs. There can still be a disconnect between what's uh, legally mandated and then what actually happens in the workplace. You know, yes, those organizations comply, you know, with the legal requirements, but are the teams and the leaders that make up those organizations truly uplifting and supporting the women who choose to step away to build a family? You know, too often the answer is no. And, the you know, the fear of a resume gap is, is very real. Women know that all over the world. And that time away can be interpreted as a, a lack of commitment rather than just the natural course of life. What can even make this more complicated is, is really the double bind that, that many women find themselves in. Women can also be penalized for not having families. We see research consistently showing that men are rewarded professionally for being fathers. And that's simply not mirrored uh, for women in the same way. And so it, it's really just kind of a, a catch-22 that a lot of women find themselves in. And I think that's really where regional investment matters. Government policies, academic institutions, and industry partnerships can really work together to normalize career paths that account for real life, what we're all going through that never looks the same for any one woman, any one family, any one individual. And, you know, for me, I think that means things like creating reentry programs, supporting flexible work models, funding, you know, leadership development opportunities for women uh, returning from leave, and then just publicly valuing diverse career trajectories and that they don't all have to follow the same rigid path often. Uh, and when these efforts are coordinated across sectors, I think they send a very clear message that women don't have to choose uh, between professional development and personal development. And so, you know, removing these barriers is really just about policy. It's truly a, a culture shift. You know, women are supported and not sidelined at these very critical moments in their lives. This initiative I mentioned, which is in Malaysia, but it would be great to see more of this across the United States and other countries. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. We need more support for women and girls and, and just um, those making decisions that stray from what's considered uh, the norm. 100%. Now, Elise, taking into consideration everything we've talked about today, what is your outlook on women in cybersecurity as we head into 2026? Do you feel optimistic? 
you know, I'm an eternal optimist. It's a it's a personality trait that I have. And honestly, working in cybersecurity almost requires that mindset. There's always a new threat, a new headline, a new reason to feel overwhelmed uh, if you let yourself. But the reality is that the, the industry is cyclical. We've faced these quote unquote uh, unprecedented times before and we've risen to meet them and we're still here. And that resilience is, is foundational to cybersecurity as a field in general. And I feel the same way about women in this space. Women are incredibly strong, resourceful, resilient, and multidimensional. And when organizations recognize and invest in those strengths that women bring to the table, the entire industry benefits. Of course, we still have a long way to go. The numbers you read at the start of our, our conversation really make that clear, but I'm genuinely hopeful. You know, the women who are here today are already shifting the landscape. They're winding the path. They're creating visibility and laying the groundwork for warm women to join us. So, you know, I absolutely feel optimistic. The momentum is real. I think we're just at the beginning of, of what women in, in security can accomplish. You've shared so many valuable perspectives with us today, so thank you so much for that. Um, before we go, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, I'd love to add that the fastest path to real progress, in my opinion, is for those of us that are already in the industry to stay attentive to who isn't at the table yet. Keep your head on a swivel. Notice the people who are showing genuine curiosity, enthusiasm, and potential, especially those who may be overlooked because they don't fit the traditional mold. Personally, I'm very aware that I'm here today because others saw something in me and chose to open a door for me. They offered me opportunities, sometimes taking a chance that they've did not have to take. And so many of those people were women who, who who came before me and took a risk on me and saw something in me and wanted to, to support that. They supported the change in the course of my entire career. And so paying that forward really matters to me. A talent and a strong resume can take you far, but sponsorship and someone willing to advocate for you is often what is truly moving careers forward these days. Thank you so much, Elise. I think everything you said is really, it sets a great pathway for us to head into the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really wonderful to get to chat with you. I appreciate the invitation. It was great to have you. To learn more about these stories and others, follow us on X at Women Know Cyber. And to find 50 women in cybersecurity associations and groups to follow, visit womeninsyber.com.